Hey, what's going on guys? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here and today another look at what I sold and what I bought. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a part-time reseller based out of Montana. I've got a day job at a radio station. When I get done there, I get to go to the estate sales and the thrift stores and the garage sales in my area. Well, garage sales when I start. Right now, it's still pretty cool. Well, actually, been in the 60s last couple of days, so I, I think, maybe, garage sale season is right around the corner, but I'm I'm itching for it. It needs to happen, but it's not happening yet. Uh, eBay, I talked about yesterday, been for me a little bit of an EKG reading. You know, it's just been up and down. Yesterday, not bad. You know, not, not huge. We, we didn't have a ton of sales, but a couple of items in there were very nice sales. And so that kind of balanced things out a little bit. And so we're going to talk about those here, let you know what I sold and what I sold it for. And then we're going to take a look at a couple of things that I picked up at Goodwill and give you an idea of what I think I should be able to sell those for in the future. So the first thing that we sold right here, a very nice sale, a Game Boy Advance. This one going out the door for $73.69 plus shipping. This was the item that pushed us over the top, that big bulk buy of video games, obviously some handhelds, uh, some uh, action figures, that sort of thing. We bought a whole bunch of that stuff here. I guess it's about three weeks ago now. And I paid $1,800. I paid up a little bit just because there was some cool stuff that I frankly just wanted in the store. And I know there's money to be made there. We've still got, we ought to make a couple thousand dollars potentially to, to get to get out of that $1,800 hole. Very happy. Then a really nice sale came in after that. This is actually an offer that was sent in and sent in by an international customer. I love selling internationally. I recommend it for most, if not all of you, that you should at least look at selling internationally. And check this out. This is Star Wars Clone Wars Ahsoka Tano. I sold this for 150 Australian dollars at an offer I had come in. The price point, I think, for Australian dollars was at 163. I think that's where it was, 163. And I sent an offer of 150, and it's certainly a reasonable offer. And so I took it. The Australian dollar, right about 75 cents. It comes out to about $113 or so, right in that range, US dollars. And so, really nice sale. I actually picked this up off of a whatnot seller. This the second time that I've sold this figure. I found one last year at a garage sale, sold it for very good money, sold it for about 75 bucks, as I remember, 75, 85 bucks, something like that. And so I found another one, and the relatively rare Ahsoka's got a pretty good following, and it's going to only grow. I could have held on to this one, and it would have been worth more here in a little bit when the Disney Plus series comes out eventually. But I know what? I'm going to move it on. I don't want to sit on something for a couple of years. So I, I still priced it up. I, I priced it pretty high. So we get about one thirteen out of this. It cost me $15 or something to ship it. So, you know, we're, we're making about $90 minus, I think I paid 25 for this. So still a pretty solid profit at the end of the day. Happy with that. We actually had another Australian buyer come in and pick this up. It was a vintage Nike visor. They paid full price on this one, $47.85 Australian dollars. U.S. dollars, it comes out to, I think it was like 36 or 38 bucks. This very light, easy to ship over. And so we made some good money on that. Guys, you need to be selling internationally, especially when eBay is sort of up and down and all over the place. You only help yourself when you increase your visibility. And you've got a lot of customers in the U.S. Yeah, sure. You got more when you add places like Australia. So very happy with my couple international sales. They definitely helped get the day started off well. Then we sold one of our Fontanini figures. You saw those in the last video. And I said, you know what? Some of these ought to sell pretty well. Some of them were pretty rare. We paid $2.99 for, I think there were a dozen all told in the little package. And the first one, Paid that off. I actually took an offer on it. I think it was priced at $9.98. Sent me an offer of $8 plus shipping for Lavana and Barack. And I took it. That, so eight plus shipping puts us into the profit on the Fontanini Nativity figure. So Nativity selling with spring now here. You can see Christmas sells year-round. And there's some, even inside of that, stuff like Shiny Bright, Fontanini, uh, Blow Molds. There are certain categories and certain brands that will certainly sell 
all year round. And the weird thing is this sold to a buyer that then came around later and bought another one and sent it to another address. But before that, I did sell this Ben 10 figure. This is Accelerate. I got this in a Shop Goodwill purchase of a big box of figures. 100% profit at this point, $13.93 plus shipping. And then the Fontanini thing. So what happened was that original buyer came in, sent me $8. I accepted and they didn't pay right away. But, you know, it was, you know, I'm, I'm fine until the next day. I'm like, all right, let, let's pay up. Well, then the payment came through last night and I was happy about that. But then five minutes later, something like that, another Fontanini figure sold. It was this one, Phoebe, the perfumer sold, $9.98 plus shipping. And I just happened to look, it was the same user bought both of them but one went to one address and one went to another completely different states other sides of the country I, i'm not sure if i got drop shipped on a font nini nativity piece or if somebody just sent one to a friend right or a, a relative whatever and so they changed the address that way it goes to that person I don't know. What do you guys think? Was I drop shipped on a $10 Fontanini piece? Or is, is this just somebody that sent it as legitimately as a gift? The message that's usually attached from drop shippers, it wasn't on there. So I didn't have that to go off of, but it's just strange that uh, this piece might be drop shipped. I don't know. And then we sold an autographed baseball. This is Francisco Cordero. This sold for $33.49. And then we had a viewer sale right before I started recording this morning. We got this come in. This is Han Solo from Power of the Force. And Michael picked this up for $7.49 plus shipping. I got these in a big bulk uh, Star Wars figure by this last summer. And so I ended up paying, I don't know, it's probably like $2 a piece, $2.50 a piece or something for all these figures. But some of them, like Ahsoka Tano, she basically paid off the entire purchase. That's where I got that original uh, Ahsoka from, not this one, but that previous. So all of these that sold were mostly profit, and this one certainly is all profit. So Michael, thank you so much. He is from uh, Orange Pickers and Resell. So thanks very much. Go check out his store, see if there's anything in there that might interest you, but I sure appreciate, Michael, you coming in and visiting my store. So now let's turn the camera around. We'll look at the table. I got some stuff sent out behind me, and I did pick up some things at Goodwill the other day. Not a lot, but definitely going to make some money off of it. So I did stop in the DVD section. Usually that's the first place I go. It's right by the door, so I just sort of turn the corner, and I go check out the DVDs. And for these, I'll show you the reason I picked these up. See right there? Well, let me get it to focus. Right there. That's not your normal, you know, that's not Paramount. That's not MGM. That, that's something different. And so that's what led me to look at that, the MHZ. Like, I, I don't know that brand. And so whenever something is unique like that, that tends to be when I grab one, two, three of them off, scan the barcode, and see maybe this is a rare piece. Maybe it's valuable. Uh, these a, a little bit falling into that category. This is Murders at Bar Loom. This is, I believe, Italian. I mean, it's Region 1 and it's got subtitles, but it's an Italian deal. And it looks like, and I, I pay now, they, the prices went up at Goodwill. I now pay $2.99 for DVDs there, but this one I have priced at about $35. I'll put up my listings here. These are all mine that I've got listed so far. So uh, Murders at Bar Loom, about $35 on that one. $30, $30 $35 in that range. Uh, Beck, again, look, it had, it was a different picture, but it was that same megahertz, whatever, networks. I don't know what it is. Um, so Beck, I looked at this one up, and this one's not quite as good, but it sells pretty well. And so I've got this one priced, I think, at about $15. Now, I don't have this one listed yet. Actually, I'm waiting for some vinyl mailers to uh, to come in. I, you can make your own, but they're so much easier to use. Just the pre-made vinyl mailers are just a little bit expensive. But So I haven't listed this one yet because I don't want it to sell before I get my mailers showing up in the next day or two. But this is a pretty good album. I've actually sold this before. That's, uh, of course, Paul McCartney and The Gatefold. And so Ram, this is a good one. I will see if I can find some comps for you guys because, like I said, it's not listed yet. But I believe this is about a $20 album. 
So I did pick this one up. And guess what? The, the, the price on these at Goodwill went up as well. Not that long ago, I was getting vinyl for 99 cents at Goodwill. So I could take a shot on some that I wasn't sure about. And I, it wouldn't be a big hit. Now they went up to two ninety nine. So even like the ten dollar ones that were borderline at ninety nine cents, and it was like, eh, maybe I'll pick that up. Now I can't. You know, not at three bucks. So this one ought to go though, and it, and it sells very well for about twenty dollars. Now these you saw, them, I, I guess, in the thumbnail. These were the surprise of the day, and I don't know necessarily why they are worth what they're worth. This is. The Scottish Bakehouse Mysteries. It's a series, and it, it looks like it's done by different authors. So I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done any kind of deep dive on the series. I guess I'm not quite curious enough to know more about it. I, I don't know. But the reason I picked these up is I saw them sitting on the shelf, right? They were all sitting there, and they're clearly the same series, right? And so just like movies, if you're looking at like TV and stuff, you want a series of them. I thought, you know what? I can grab those if they're any good and sell them as a lot for 15, 20 bucks. They're 99 cents a piece. So I thought 15, 20 bucks plus shipping. I bet I could do that even if they're just decent since there's four of them. Well, look them up and it turns out most of these are really good. I said, we got a winner. We, we got a winner. We and, well, and that's the weird thing. Not all of the series, but most of these four that I picked up are. This is the best of them. Wed on Arrival. There's a play on words on, on all of these. I think it's like a, a, a young adult mystery series is what it seems like. And it's like Annie's Cookies or something. Yeah. I don't know, but wed on arrival. This is also look. Here's my comp right here. It's worth about forty dollars. It's between thirty and forty dollars. I believe mine is the only one listed on eBay right now. And this is the I do know because I found it while researching comps. This is the last in the series. So very often with comic books, with books, with different the, you know, movies maybe or series, the last, the first or the last in the series tend to carry a little bit more value. And so I understand why this one is a little bit more valuable, a little bit more desirable. But Wed on Arrival, I've got it priced a little bit high because mine is the only one, but it's worth at least 30 bucks, 35 bucks. There's sold comps. So we'll see. Reign of Terrier, which I, I think is my favorite play on words of the set, isn't worth anything. I mean, there, there's sales of this for like a dollar. Right? Like, it's so weird. Why is this one worth 30 to 40 and this one's worth 5 It's the same series. It's a different author, I guess. But look, it's the same dog. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. If any of you guys know, underneath, in the comments, do you guys know about the Scottish Bakehouse Mysteries and why some of them are valuable and why some of them are just not? There's some that just don't really sell or sell for a dollar or two plus shipping. And then there's others that sell for good money. I, I just don't know why. In Grave Danger is another one. This one, uh, about $40, guys. I mean, I, I don't know. Going back, this one's Elizabeth Penny, which I think, nope, different name there. So see, it's all different people. So Elizabeth Penny, hers is worth about 40 bucks. Come here. And then Hide and Seek. This one is worth uh, about 20 bucks right in there. So looks like that dog is uh, a very common. Look, he's, it's like, where's Waldo? He's everywhere. So hide and seek about 20 bucks in the Scottish Bakehouse Mysteries. So that's stuff I sold. That's the stuff I picked up, uh, you know, and I don't know why. It's a rhetorical question, Farley. What? That's a rhetorical question. That means you don't have to answer it. Now, why do some things sell for more on eBay? I guess my answer is because they do. I, it, it's one of those things where you, you kind of, while it can be educational and it can be beneficial to understand why, because that can help you down the road with other items. And if you find more in that same category, that's there are definitely reasons why you can or should know why things are more valuable. But sometimes, and I think most times maybe, it doesn't matter. Like it, it, it doesn't really matter why something is more valuable. It doesn't matter why somebody is willing to pay more money 
for something that you find, it might not make sense to you. It doesn't matter, right? If that's the market, if that's what somebody out there is willing to pay, that's what somebody's willing to pay. I don't need to question why you're going to give me $40 for a youth mystery book. I'm just going to be happy when the cha-ching comes through and you do. So, uh, like I said, if anybody understands why some of those are pretty valuable, I, I would guess that maybe it's just circulation. You know, it's just it's scarcity. There weren't a lot of those put out, potentially, and that's why some of them are more valuable because people that love that series have a harder time finding particular books. I don't know. That That's my guess, but I really don't know. It's really beyond words. It's really incalculable. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I sure appreciate it. We've got a viewer question. We're going to answer that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. I, I told you I was going to answer it. I am. We're going to put that in the next video. So we're going to get to a viewer question. And I think we're going to set up a, uh, a whatnot auction for tomorrow as well. I'm not sure of what yet. Something. We'll let you know tomorrow. We'll see you guys.